welcome to WeatherWise. I'm meteorologist Brittany Beggs. Evaporation and evapotranspiration are both ways in which water is released into the air. We've heard the term evaporation before, but what exactly does this mean for our weather? Well, today we're going to discuss two ways in which water vapor is released into our atmosphere. So let's discuss evaporation first. Evaporation occurs every day across the surface of the Earth at a rate of one eighth an inch each day. Over different areas, more or less is evaporated. For example, in the tropics, more evaporation occurs, while over cooler surfaces, much less evaporation occurs. And then there are the deserts, where really hardly any moisture exists, so essentially no evaporation occurs there. Evaporation is water changing from one state, for example a liquid, to another, for example water vapor. For this change of phase to occur, energy is required in the form of heat called latent heat. When water evaporates, it removes heat from the atmosphere and in result, it cools the air. Transpiration consists of the vaporization of the liquid water in the plant. Now the plants will have small openings where it releases the water vapor into the atmosphere called stomata. So evapotranspiration is then the evaporation of water from plants. Let's say the crop is smaller, then the water is predominantly lost by the soil evaporation. But once the crop is well developed and completely covers the soil, transpiration then becomes the main process. Air humidity, air temperature, and the wind all play a role in the evapotranspiration rates. So the question remains, why do we even care about evapotranspiration? Evapotranspiration is actually the second largest component of the hydrological water balance behind rain. Evapotranspiration is an important process in the water cycle because it is responsible for 15% of the atmosphere's water vapor. Without this input of water vapor, clouds couldn't form and rain would never fall. Winds affect evapotranspiration by bringing heat energy into an area and removing the vaporized moisture. A five mile per hour wind will increase a still air evapotranspiration rate by 20%. A 15 mile per hour wind will increase still air evapotranspiration by 50%. Daily fluctuations in evapotranspiration also occur. On clear days, the rate of transpiration increases rapidly in the morning and reaches a maximum usually in the early afternoon or mid-afternoon hours. The midday warmth can actually cause closure of the plant leaf, which results in a decrease in the transpiration rate. The average annual evapotranspiration for irrigated lands varies greatly and it depends on the grass or the crop type and the amount that of water that is being applied. During a drought, however, the natural vegetation can experience what we call moisture stress, where irrigated grass and crops continue to grow and transpire at a normal rate. Thank you for joining us on WeatherWise today. I hope you learned something. For more weather updates and weather tips, you can log on to heraldmail.com or follow us on Twitter at HMWeatherNews. Until then, stay weather wise.